this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting on something a little different than my normal gloss painting or rock painting. I had somebody contact me about painting on these canvas cozies you know, for your beverages, your cans, that type of thing. Never done this before, so we're going to give it a try. I actually did a couple yesterday, but as far as doing these to sell or whatever. I've never painted on this before. So it's almost kind of like painting on fabric. So I'm going to show you a design using 3A Magic paint brushes. And I am using a number 2, a number 10, and a number 6. These are all flat brushes. I will have links below the video for you if you'd like to purchase these uh, through my affiliate links. You're welcome to do so. Just look underneath the video. I'm also going to be using a number four uh, Deerfoot Stippler brush for the centers. And let's see, colors of paint that I'm using today are folk art paints using yellow ochre. Forest Moss. You will find that these are a combination of enamels and multi-surface. Thicket. Lavender. Wicker White. Red Violet. And Burnt Sienna. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Just going to be doing a real simple design, so I'm kind of sticking with that, which is you know what I've done all along, pretty much. I'm going to double load my brush, my number 10, and I'm going in between the <clears throat> excuse me the I gotta make sure I clean off my fingers the. Uh, Red, vi red violet and the wicker white. So I'm just dipping my sides of my brush into each color and then I can do my blending strokes. Now again when you're doing it on a fabric like this, a canvas fabric, once again you have to adjust to the surface that you're painting on. And you know, adjust accordingly, meaning that you, you'll see here in a second, it's got some paint on that brush, but as far as the coverage goes, I have to be really careful because you all know how, how I am as far as painting things. I have a tendency to get my fingers in them and everything else, so we'll see here. Alright, so the first stroke I'm going to do, this is going to be a, a leaf that has like the two the two strokes to it. So it's like a hump and then another hump and you come around. Alright, so with the, the canvas you might have to just make sure that you're getting some good coverage as far as the little raggedy ends here. You might have to go back over just to fill them in and make sure they're covered. So like right there, sorry I bumped up here, right there it's not covered completely. So I'm going to just go back over it and make sure that I get those covered. If I feel like I didn't, I still can go back over it again and just make sure that the edges are nice and neat. Alright, so then I'm going to come this way and just kind of bump it up like that. And I can turn it. I just have to be really careful because yesterday I did get my fingers in on one part of it and one of the ones I was painting yesterday and it's like I just have to be careful. I'm used to being able to wipe things off if I stick my fingers in them. And with this project you can't do that so much. But I'm turning it like I like to do. I have some colors prominent on the exterior. Like the first the ones that I painted have the lighter color on the outside. And then the bottom strokes I'm going to do on this particular one have the darker on the outside. 
one thing nice with these is I can just turn it, put my fingers inside, hopefully keep it from getting all messy. For the purpose of the video, I'm just going to do the front of this. For the real product, I do the whole thing all the way around. All right. So, actually, I want to reverse it here. Try to do rotate it here. And when you're doing this stroke, just again, very simple. Grab your brush and just roll it over. Again, I'm going to create the same stroke. Now, you can leave a space in between these two if you want so that your petals of your flower design are not actually touching each other. But I'm okay with them touching, so I'm leaving it the way it is. And even though these really are not specific brushes for fabric, they do, they actually work well, I think. Now I'll come this way and do another stroke. And they can over overlap a little bit. That's perfectly fine. I have my camera adjusted because I was sitting down yesterday doing these. So I have my camera adjusted a little differently. So sorry if I'm floating off the screen a little bit. Again, just like any of my other designs, if you feel like you're getting too full of paint, just wipe it off on a paper towel. That will be fine. All right. If you're new to my channel and you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you uh, have not already subscribed, please hit that button underneath that will allow you to subscribe to my videos and receive a notification by hitting that notification bell whenever I post something new. That would be perfect. Okay, so then what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to dip my brush into the it's lavender and the wicker white. Just do my blending strokes just like I did on the first ones. Now you can do one of two things. You can actually do this painting with this opposite color, but what I'm going to do here is just do some little buds for you. The little buds are just two of these strokes together just like I did on here, but I'm just doing two and then stopping. That's my butt. Now you can do one a little bit higher if you want. I'm trying to make sure again that I get the edges nice and neat. And pull it up. Pull it around. Okay, I can do a couple of these. I just want to show you because then I'm going to finish up here with the centers and the greens and all that so that my video is not too awful long. And then I can finish the design and continue on. Now I like to throw in a little bit of the uh, other color that I was using, which is the violet, the red violet. So I'm throwing that a couple of those in. Like that. And then let's see what we need to do here because I'm going to do one more. I wipe my brush off, but one more using the red violet. And I'm going to start over here. I think I'm going to come down a little bit because I don't want them all the same height. But I'm going to come down here and start my strokes. 
I'm going to go back in, put some more paint in my brush. You can see how it's going to dry. I need more paint on my brush. I just want to make sure I get it into the fabric. And then I'm going to do, do that here. It's not as easy to do the stroke work on this, I will admit. You just kind of have to get it again, get adjusted to the surface that you're painting on and go from there with it. It's like all surfaces are not equal. I just want to make sure I get this good. Bring it around, and there you go. All right, so I need to do one more, and they're not—they don't have to all be straight up and down as far as the colors go. This one's kind of a little sideways, and that's fine. That's what I intended. That was on purpose. Again, I'm just going over it to make sure I get it nice and. Good with good coverage. I'm going to put the light on the bottom. So like with this stroke, I'm considering the, these two strokes together as one petal. I'm going to go over it again. just want to make sure. It's very easy. And if they dry and you feel like it doesn't have enough color on it, you know, by all means go over it again. Just like anything you paint. I feel like that needs to be a little bit brighter. Like that. There we go. All right, so we have that. I think I'm going to put a couple little buds at the top here. Just do some simple little strokes like that. Don't have to make them very big, and you can switch to a different brush size if you wish. That would be fine. And I'm going to put one over here that has the lavender in it just to vary it a little bit. And I could also do an open flower with this lavender. I just chose to do the buds, but I think it just gives it a little bit of a contrast in color, which is why I did it this way. Okay, I'm gonna clean this one up a little bit too though. And I'm just going to do, do this for the purpose of the video, but I will be doing more to it once I finish the video. All right, so I'm taking my number six flat brush and I'm doing the side loading of the thicket, the forest moss, and then I'm also going to tip in some of the yellow ochre for the leaves, for some of the leaves, I should say, not all of them. All right, so to complete these, I'm going to just do some pulls right up in here and bring it down. Come back, do the same thing. Just go over it a little bit more, clean it up, pull it down, and then do a pull through the center. Or as close to it as possible. Like that. And then bring it in here. Alright, got these two right here, and then I'm going to come over here to my other buds, do the same thing. And 
to keep loading paint in my brush, but if I get it to where it has too much paint on it, then I'll just wipe it off with my paper towel or on my paper towel. Very easy. And you could put a little wave in it. You know, you don't necessarily have to have straight uh, stems or vines or whatever you're doing. Put a little curve into them. And I just like to go through the center and do that. And then I'm going to to start doing my leaves. If you follow me, you know that the leaves are my favorite thing to do. And I want to make sure I get all these roughly little edges taken care of. Having more paint on my brush helps. I just put my little stem through here, like that. So basically my de designs are not any different than what I would paint on one of my regular items. You know, same design. The only thing, like I said, doing more of a roughly type leaf or whatnot is not as easy with this type of uh, surface. I didn't even know they made these until this person contacted me about painting some for them. I had never even seen these before. I'm like, yeah, I'm give it a try. Definitely not my normal my normal surface for any me by any means, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be, right? So then I am going to come back over here to my little buds I had before I do. Almost done here, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. I'm trying to make sure I'm staying on camera, so I apologize if I've floated off at all. I'm trying very hard not to do that. I guess I'd have my camera adjusted a little differently than I normally would. Just trying to get crisp lines if I can here. It's very light. And you could put more. I mean, it's you don't have to stick with what I'm doing. Um, but I'm going to stop with that as far as how many I've put on here so far. All right, so then I'm gonna do like a little pull coming down. Do a couple little things here. Another one, maybe another one up this way. And I don't know, I'm just trying very carefully not to stick my fingers in anything. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but it, it's such a big deal for me because I do it so often. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my, the smaller, the number two. I am going to load it with the forest moss. And then I'm just, I'm just, I'm not doing a one stroke thing, I'm just putting a bunch of paint in it, in the brush itself. So then I'm going to start doing pulls like this. I'm pulling it, touching and pull, touching and pull. And it's just a mixture of those two paints. I think I did get a little bit of the purple on my leaf. That's fine. Just go here, keep going, and pull it. Now what I can do is come back through and just add some white, just sporadically, like this. 
doesn't have to be a lot and I can actually add some of the darker green it, itself it's not dark green but it's without having white in it is what I mean that's what I'm meaning by that just do some pulls I mean you can do more you can do less doesn't really matter and it's fine. And I have a I'm sorry, I think I floated off the camera again. Uh, I can do more or less. And these are just simple pulls going like this. Just to put some depth. I mean I could even go in with a little bit of the the darker green if I wanted to, just to give it some some more detail. And I'm washing so much of it off that it's kind of taken away from it, but there you go. Like this, just to be able to see it a little bit more, give it some more color. Alright. So then I'm going to do that on this one here. I'm trying to make sure, once again, I'm not putting my darn fingers in them. Go back to the forest moss and do the same thing. Just pull on it. I'm pulling and maybe even giving it a little bit of a curve like that and you make it petite or how that on it sorry guys I'm making this video for you and it's like you're not gonna be able to see half of it so I'm just doing little pulls just like I just did. So these are going out and pulling in towards the, the stem in the center. I'm going to go back and add a little bit of the darker green just like I did on the other one. Just to kind of put it in here but not... Yeah, so it's a little bit smaller. And then what I'm going to do, load my brush with the forest moss again. But I'm going to go into the into the uh, yellow ochre, and I'm going to do this kind of a leaf where I pull away from the stem. So I pull away. Yes, it's going over my flower, but that's fine. When you do a, a floral arrangement, you're not going to have everything this evenly lined up and not touching each other. It's going to be naturally put together. Again, just cover up, make sure you get good coverage. And then come in here, do the same thing all the way up. Again, this is different because it's pulling away from the stem makes a different type of a leaf. And I can do that here. Maybe even come out here just with a smaller one. Don't, they all don't have to be the same size either. Turned a little bit. Come back over this one a little bit. I don't know what the deal was with it. All right, so then I can also go back to the darker green, which is the thicket, and then do little pulls to put stems into these. And I can actually mix a little bit with the with the moss green. Yes. Got a little bit of purple in there. I don't want the purple in there. Not really. A little bit of the darker, and then just come in here, do quick little pulls, and you can see them, but they're not real prevalent. Not real prevalent, and they don't have to be, and they're not meant to be. Now you could also, I kind of like to do little things where I kind of pull out a little bit from it. Just lightly, and doesn't have to be the same color. You can vary the colors, and that just kind of gives it a little bit of a contrast. And 
and you could put more of the yellow in here if you want to. You want to come back in and just kind of touch in some yellow. You can just to give it give it a little bit of something like that. All right, so then we want to do one more, and then I'll do the center, and we'll be done. All right, so I'm going to do the forest moss, get it with the yellow in it, and then once again, I'm going to do these simple little leaves that are just pulling from the stem. Pulling from the stem. I can even turn my paintbrush over because I have a lot of... Uh, paint on the one side, come back, get it loaded again, so make sure it's covered. All right, so then, once again, come into a little, little darker green, I can come up in here, Come up around here, around here. Sorry, I'm baking stuff again. I tend to get that into my videos a lot. I'm just trying to do this very lightly. Now, something like this, again, you can do, you know, just some, just kind of wiggly little lines and then I can come back like I did on the other one. I have I think I have a little bit more yellow in these so I could actually come back with some green some of the forest moss touch it in there like that so right now we've got, we're almost done with this part. Very pretty. Imagine carrying your, your beer, your Coke, your pop, whatever in this. It would be fun. Alright, so I'm going to do my little stippler. Deer foot stippler. Putting the front of it into the yellow ochre. And the back part of it into the burnt sienna. And I'm going to tap in my centers. Now I'm just tapping on, not doing anything special, just doing the tapping. Main concern here is to make sure I get some good coverage. And I like to tap it in with my brown center kind of being a little bit up into the yellow, not just strictly around the bottom. And I'm going to do this one. And then just kind of tapping it in there. Probably even more so than I did over here. I just like them to be more loose for some reason. I'm really liking the, the looser painting. And then I can come down here and finish this one off. You can point your centers in different directions if you want. They don't all have to be pointing the same direction. I think on this one they pretty much are, but again, that's not something you have to do. That's like going to be random. Alright, and then like I like to do, I always like to throw a third color into them and just kind of tap that in. I have no idea why I like that, but I do. I think maybe it just gives it a little bit looser look. You can do more. You can play with it. It's up to you. But anyhow, here it is. Cute little koozie. And fun little project. Something you could easily do. Make even nice little gifts for people. Alright, I hope you like this. If you do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, hit that subscribe button notification bell. 
And before you leave, if you would share this on your social network with all your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, until the next time, please stay safe and healthy. You have a good one.